You see that? I'm like making animation here, you guys. Welcome to episode 31 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, but we do get up to other fiber related topics from time to time, like crochet and hand dyeing yarn. I'm coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small suburb outside of Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. This is where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three and a half year old son, Angus, our five month old son, Ronan, and our big fat house cat, Oscar. If you are returning viewer thank you so much for coming back time and time again every time I upload something here on the channel and if you are a new viewer and subscriber thank you so much for giving this channel a shot and seeing what we have to offer over here in this small little corner of YouTube don't forget if at any point you like what you see here give the video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe that thumbs up in your subscription lets YouTube know that there's something of value here and it helps spread the word about the channel and the podcast also don't forget you can click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button that will notify you anytime videos are uploaded here on the channel. YouTube is a little wacky with the way that they notify people of new videos coming through their feed. This guarantees that you're going to see all the new uploads as they come. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can do so via email. The email link to the podcast is woolneedleshands at gmail.com. You can also find me on Ravelry. My Ravelry handle is at woolneedleshands and we do have a Ravelry group for the podcast. Just go to the groups tab and search woolneedleshands a knitting podcast and you can join the group over there and get involved in the conversation and be a part of the really awesome community that has grown around this podcast. You can also find me on Instagram. I am at woolneedleshands on Instagram. You can also find me on Instagram as at fiber.for.the.people. That is the Instagram account linked to Fiber for the People, which is the hand dyed yarn business that I operate here from my home in Henderson, Nevada. To learn more about Fiber for the People, head over to fiberforthepeople.com. That is the online shop for Fiber for the People yarn. You can learn a little bit about how the shop got started, learn a little bit about Lucky Strike Color ways, which I am going to mention here on the podcast frequently. You can also see what's in the store right now and what is upcoming. And don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. There is a shop update for Fiber for the People coming this Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Typically shop updates are 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but I like to swap it with a 7 p.m. shop update time because it's a little bit more internationally friendly and I feel like it works for almost everybody. I know if you're in the East Coast, it's a little bit late, um, but it's a really kind of good, I I guess happy medium. So don't forget to hit up the Fiber for the People shop update on Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, guys, it's time for the yarn sexies. This is where I share with you just a little clip of what is coming to the shop. You could call this yarn porn, I suppose. I like to call it yarn sexies. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the fibery, yarny goodness that's coming to the shop on Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. 
so much. I love filming that little section and I love watching it back. It's so calming and soothing and the colors are beautiful. So that is what's going to be coming to the shop this Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you are a viewer of the podcast and if you're watching right now, then you are. Don't forget to use the coupon code WNHLOVE for 10% off your entire order. I want to just take a quick second to give you guys an update on some events that are coming up that I will be participating in and I'm super, super excited about it. In my neck of the woods, which is Western United States, it is Vogue Knitting Live season. San Francisco VKL is coming up at the end of September and I will be there with my sister-in-law. We're taking a trip to San Francisco. We've booked our plane tickets, we've booked our hotel and we are going to Vogue Knitting Live and I'm so excited. So if you're gonna be at VKL in San Francisco at the end of September, please let me know down in the comment section. Keep an eye out. I would love to meet you if you are there. Please don't hesitate to come up and say hello. Coming after that in November is Stitches SoCal. So that is the Stitches, kind of like what you're familiar with, Stitches West. It's the same um, convention company. They have an event in Southern California called Stitches SoCal. It's the same, I believe it's the same event essentially as Stitches West in Santa Clara, but it is just in Southern California in Pasadena. So I will be going to that. I will be staying in California with my family to see some friends and we're gonna head down to Pasadena and check out the marketplace for Stitches SoCal. Fast forward to February, plane tickets are booked, hotel reservations are made. My best friend and I are flying up to Santa Clara for Stitches West and you guys, I am so excited. Let me know if you're gonna be at any of these events because like I said, I would love to meet you in person. I can't wait to go and see people in this community in person. I have been wanting to go to Stitches West ever since I like found out that it existed um, so, so badly. So I'm super excited to have these on my docket for events this year and next year. No, I will not be going to Rhinebeck this year. It just really isn't in the plans uh, for me. It's, you know, all the way on the other side of the country, um, kind of in an odd time for us here with our family. I was I was thinking I was going to go. I was really going to just go and I was going to end up going by myself because it just doesn't work out for our family to get there. But I just decided I'm not going to do that. I'd like to wait until next year when both of the boys are old enough to go and we can actually, they can, you know, my youngest can walk and my oldest is totally fine walking around all day. I'd really like to go as a family. So instead of having to, you know, dish out the expense to go this year all by myself. I'd rather wait and go next year when we can all go as a family. For this year and then next spring, you guys, Vogue Knitting Live, Stitches SoCal and Stitches West, like I can't complain. So please let me know if you're gonna be at any of those and hopefully I'll see you there. you guys we have two knit alongs actually we have one knit along going on right now and we have another knit along starting on Saturday September 1st so the knit along going on right now is the wool needles hands year of hats knit along 2018 the whole purpose of this is to knit hats all year long we're knitting a different hat every month based on the monthly theme you can learn more about this by heading over to the Ravelry group and looking for the year of hats Cal guidelines gives you all of the information you need to know to get started there we are currently wrapping up the month of August August, which is where we are knitting gift hats. So getting a jump on our gift knitting and knitting hats that will be gifts for others. It doesn't have to be Christmas gifts. It's just any gifts. I would tell you that you could totally jump on board and start August right now. And I guess you can if you can knit a hat in that timeline, which hey, who's to say that you can't? So definitely, if you'd like to join for August and get a gift hat out of the way, definitely do it. The um, thread for that is going to be closed on the 31st of August, so keep that in mind. So August is wrapping up, and before I go any further in this segment of the podcast, I wanna share with you guys the prize for the August portion of the knit along because I've completely forgotten to do it on the last two episodes of the podcast. So without further ado, here's what you could win for submitting your hat into the finished object thread on Ravelry for the August portion portion of the knit along. Okay, I'm super excited to be giving these away because they've been sitting in my prize box and I knew I wanted to give it away for August and I've just forgotten to bring it out and share it. You guys, these things, this is so adorable and it's, I think what I love most about this and you'll see it in a second, it's a little bit of a different uh, prize package than yarn and a project bag. And there's nothing wrong with yarn in a project bag. Lord knows we need more project bags, but I think this is a really cool way to mix it up. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys. So this is by Little Fish Stitches, which is Megan Blackburn. She has a, an Etsy shop, which is creations by guppy.etsy.com. She has hand dyed yarn and sewn goods. And one of those sewn goods, and this is the package. I'm going to show you the package first. So here is the package. 
what's inside. Let's go ahead and find out. This is her business card. I love that her business card is a square. I've contemplated square business cards and I really, I really love them. So Megan, I like your business card. So this is the square business card for Little Fish Stitches. And you can see some of her hand dyed yarn on the back, which is beautiful. You can actually see some of it up here too. And you guys, it's really quite lovely. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's our business card. This is, I love the packaging. I love it when packaging is so neat and tidy. Everything fits just right. Um, there's a little postcard that comes. It gives you the information for the shop site, some photographs of her work. Beautiful. And this, you guys. Oh my gosh, Megan, I'm so excited to share this if you're watching. This is an apron. How, okay, let me just make sure I'm doing this correctly. Let's not make a pig's ear out of the Vanna White section. So this is an apron. You guys, just look at this. Look, I mean, it's adorable. Look at these pockets. What? And it's so nicely made. Oh, it's beautiful. Just, let's just look at that. Seam work. Is that what you call that? Ugh. Oh lovely and look at these con this contrasting fabric that stag i love it so much these feathers these feathers remind me of some of the feathers that are could be made um knit or crocheted for the garland along which i'll be talking about in a minute um but oh, so beautiful i love it and what i love about this is that it's long enough that you can wrap this around your waist and then bring it back to the front and tie it whenever i have an apron on i don't just i'm not what do they call that a half wrapper i'm not a half wrapper where I, where I wrap it once and then tie it off and then be done i have to like wrap it like this and bring it back around to the front and then tie it off and then i'm done that way that's what you can do with this which makes it great so this is a beautiful sewn apron lovely sewn apron by Little Fish Stitches, which is Megan Blackburn. So you will win this, and I'm gonna fold this up and put it back in the package later when I can do it correctly. And not only will you win that, but you will also win some yarn that was dyed by Megan. I'll share these guys with you. So you can get a little peek at what's going on on the inside here. There we go. Ugh. Oh. So pretty. Okay, let's pop that out so you can see it. I don't want it to. You guys, what? Look how pretty. How pretty is that? And the little ball band that goes with it. Super cute. This colorway right here is called Strawberry Freckles. So we have Strawberry Freckles here. And then she also has two more of these little minis. And this is her Stellina base. I can see it is um, a silver tone Stellina. So it's 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5%. Actually, it should be. It says on here 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% Stellina, but I believe it's 75% superwash merino. 20% uh, nylon and 5% silver Stellina. So that's one of them. And then I'm not going to actually take these ones out of the little wrapper because it's taken me a little bit of time to get that back in and I want them to stay nice for you. This beautiful, like, punchy green. Holy moly. This is Kino... Qu Qu oh, goodness. I don't think I'm pronouncing this right, but it's Q-U-I-N-A-O-U... A... Q-U-I-N-A-U-L-T. What is this? Quino? Quinault? I could be like, you know, phonetic and say Quinault. <laughs> and I know that's not right. And it would be just like me to, I, no. I'm just going to leave it there and you can, you know, insert your own pronunciation. This, Rainforest Summer, and it's beautiful. It's coming out super neon, you guys, on the camera. It is not that, <laughs> like, Toxic Avenger neon at all. It's beautiful. I mean, maybe if I like hold it back by my, no, it's, it's beautiful. And this is also on Stellina and this, yeah, silver tone Stellina here as well. And then we have Gothic Peacock. Oh, I feel like I should take this one out so you can see it. That's okay. Beautiful. I'm going to plump it up a little bit here. And there is Gothic Peacock. Let's see. Oh, what? Yes. I love that. Gorgeous. Okay, so these mini skeins, and this is, um, 
Oh, this one here is 75.25 uh, Superwash Merino and Nylon. This does not have any Stellina in it, but it's beautiful. And it doesn't say on here how what the yardage is, but I think you can assume that it's probably 80 yards, 20 grams. Um, but it's gorgeous. And all of these things are going to be coming for the August prize for the knit along. So definitely keep posted, get all of your finished objects in the FO thread so that I can count them when this portion of the knit along is over. And then we'll be moving into September. September is all about knitting a hat that has cables. And I am so excited for this month, even though I, I mean, I have a hat that I'm working on for August. It's not gonna be finished by the time August is over, but I'm planning on having it finished at least by the end of the first week of September. And then I have some plans to um, knit up a cable hat design using my O Merino worsted base from Fiber for the People, just to add to the pattern repertoire that's gonna be offered in the shop. So. September is exciting. I love cables. I'm really excited for that. So keep that in mind. If you are going to be participating in September, now is the time um, to find a pattern that has cables for the September portion of the knit along. And remember, crochet is fine. It doesn't have to be for an adult. It can be for any size human. Um, I mean, it could be for any like species if you want, whichever species you think is going to want to wear a cable hat. I don't think I need to take it that far. So September, hat that has cables motorcycles. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the finished objects that are hitting the FO thread for the August portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2018. <laughs> Guys, the next make along that's going on over here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast is the WNH Garland Along 2018. This is a make along where we are crocheting or knitting or however you want to construct these with fiber garlands. So I've recently um, kind of taken notice of crochet and knit garlands. Ever since I actually started crocheting, I started seeing these pop up in my Pinterest feed. And I think it has to do with all the little cutesy crochet patterns that I was pinning. And I was realizing just how adorable these are. And then my sister-in-law saw a granny square garland at this little baby store in Cedar City, Utah. And she thought that would be super cute to have in her baby room she's expecting in November. And so I decided I was gonna go ahead and create one for her. And I brought this up to the viewers here at the podcast. And we decided that we were gonna have a garland along. So that will be kicking off on September 1st, which is Saturday. I will be doing um, initially a granny square garland. And then after that, I'm gonna kind of decide what I'd like to work on um, at that that point. The first project for this knit along or make along that I'm going to be doing is a granny square um, crochet garland, kind of like the one that you're seeing right over here. Something really vintagey looking, but soft with really nice, um, well, I guess vintagey colors that can be hung in a little girl's baby room. So super excited about that. If you are interested in getting involved, remember crochet or knitting, whichever suits you, head over to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast group on Ravelry, find the chatter thread and the information there. You can learn all about what's gonna be going on in this make along and you can actually see some little inspiration ideas that people have already added over there on that chatter thread. Right now, um, there's not a lot of us participating in this and I think it's just because um, this isn't really a typical, I guess, project that people are working on right about now. So jump on board. We need more people to kind of keep this thing going, but we have, we have time. We're going to be doing this all the way until the beginning of next year, uh, January 1st. So there's definitely time to kind of get motivated to participate. And remember, this is a really excellent way if you would like to create a collection of crochet or knit garlands to decorate a Christmas tree, to decorate for Halloween or for Thanksgiving or for whatever. This is a really good way to kind of get that going and have a reason to do it, I guess, because we're all going to be doing it together. So that's what's going on um, in addition to the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats knit along. So if you're interested, like I said, head over to the Ravelry group and you can learn more there. I'm noticing outside my window, 
you can see our patchy lawn. We are actually in the pro summertime is brutal <laughs> on lawns. That's why when you live in a place like this, you see lots of, you know, artificial lawn like grass, which I'm really completely against. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not really, it's great for water conservation, it is. Um, but it's really hard and so we actually are um, in the process right now of weeding and reseeding our lawn so that we can have a really nice lush lawn by October. Um, this We did this last year as well, it's just a really good way to kind of reinvigorate your grass. So yeah, like I, you know, because you were really judging me by my grass, weren't you? I noticed it so I chatted about it a little bit, but that's kind of what's going on over there, so. Anyway, in the meantime, I have some hot tea with me today. This is actually a little different. I have been drinking a lot of iced tea lately. It's been so hot, but you know what's what's great? And this is gonna sound crazy, but you can tell fall is right around the corner. It gets like a look, there's like a, a look about the outside. The shadows are longer, the sun is in a different position. Everything just looks less summery and more fall-like, and that's kind of happening right now. And then on top of that, it's just not getting as hot. Um, I think it got to, in this, Again, like this is crazy. It got to 103 today, but, but wait, that wasn't until like 5 p.m. And then it dipped down below 100 like shortly after. So it only stays in the hundreds for a very short period of time. And when it's under 100 degrees, when it's dry outside, uh, it's definitely manageable. It's really not that bad. I mean, unless you're in the direct sunlight, but otherwise it's nice. But that little dip in the temperature is enough to make me completely start thinking about, you know, fall weather and like Christmas songs because that's what happens when the temperature begins to drop. And so hot tea it is. And it's, you know, it's hot outside, but it's nice inside. Um, so I'm okay with a little hot tea right now. This is actually just chamomile tea. This is typically my go-to, especially in the evenings. I've um, been drinking chamomile tea or some other kind of like a calming tea, usually between like three and five in the afternoon. It kind of calms me down from the busyness of the day. Um, it's usually during the time that my little ones are napping and it allows me a chance to kind of recharge my batteries. And then at the end of the night, I drink a sleepy time tea that has valerian in it and it helps me get to sleep. There's a lot going on right now. And so, you know, sometimes you find that your nights are a little bit sleepless. And so that helps a lot. And so around this time of the evening, chamomile tea is definitely, um, is definitely good for me. So that is what's going on in here. And I'm drinking it in my adorable little cat mug. This cat looks like Oscar in a bow tie, which is why I love it. This is actually a um, Cynthia Rowley mug that I picked up at Home Goods. It's just really beautiful. I love all the different little colors. So, yeah, so that's what's going on in there. And the chamomile tea that I'm drinking is by Nature's Cuppa, and it's organic, fair trade chamomile tea. Let's see my... <laughs> My camera lens is on um, facial recognition focus, which is usually excellent, but sometimes like I'll put something up in front of the camera and the facial recognition box starts going like this. So I'll like take it like this and the box is like going over here and I'm like following it and then it pops back on my face. It's so frustrating sometimes, but that is just the nature of podcasting with a lens. That is what I'm drinking. That's what's in my mug right now. And it's, like I said, it's keeping me calm. So it's kind of nice. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to try something a little bit different on the podcast. Not different necessarily from anything in particular, but new. I um, have a book in my collection that I read a long time ago on a flight, um, a flight to and from a particular place. And it was a long time ago and I kind of remember the story, but not a lot. And I saw it sitting on my shelf and I thought this is a book that I would like to pick up and reread. And it's really relevant to like all of this, I guess you could say, in, in a way. I mean, not entirely, but in a way. And I wanted to share this with you guys and kind of open up, you know, the option for you to join me in reading this book. Now, again, like this is crazy and it's a little bit different to do kind of like a book club type segment on the podcast, but I'm going to try it because I really want to read this again and it would be cool to chat about it with you guys um, here on the podcast. And I can actually open up a chatter thread surrounding this book on the Ravelry group. Plus we can chat about it in the comments below. So if you need a book to read, something that's relatively short, um, it's not going to be a huge uh, investment of time. Um, and believe me, this is something that I will be reading reading 
almost exclusively before bed because there's very little time for me during the day to pick up a book and read because that time during the day that I have, I'm usually watching a knitting podcast, having a cup of tea and working on some knitting. So this is pretty much what I would be doing right before bed. So it's not like I'm going to be reading a ton of this in a really short period of time. That's just not going to happen. So I'm talking about those of you that are interested in reading a new book, um, something that might be kind of wooly and fun, and maybe you don't want to read it too fast. You just want to take your time and have a place to kind of chat about it in the comments or on a chatter thread. Um, this might be for you. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys the name of the book and give you a little bit of a background on the story. And then let me know down in the comments below if you'd be up for reading it. And then on the next episode of the podcast, um, we'll talk about how we're going to go forward with this. So the book is called Three Bags Full. And it is, it's a detective story. So it's kind of like a philosophical murder mystery. Um, and the twist is that the detectives in the story that are solving the murder are sheep. And it takes place in Glenkill, Ireland. Um, and it's okay. So you know, instead of me trying to kind of rehash everything that I remember, which is kind of limited right now, I'm going to go ahead and just briefly read part of it from the back. So it says, On a hillside near the cozy Irish village of Glenkill, the members of the flock gather around their shepherd, George, whose body lies pinned to the ground with a spade. George has cared for the sheep, reading them a plethora of books every night. The daily exposure to literature has made them far savvier about the workings of the human mind than your average sheep. Led by Miss Maple, the smartest sheep in Glenkill and possibly the world, they set out to find George's killer. So, and it's not, um, it's not a juvenile fiction story. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I know that sometimes uh, that can turn people off. <laughs> I don't know. I it's just I get that if that's kind of it, you kind of get that maybe that um, idea that this could be juvenile fiction and it's not it's just a general fiction story and it is by Leonie Swan this I just love the cover it's it's really cool um, the way that each of the sheep are numbered and in on this black sheep it says a sheep detective story like you guys we love sheep because they provide us with amazing wool and yarn and so I thought this was kind of a cool way to uh to celebrate this amazing animal in something that puts them at the center of a murder where they have to actually solve it. So I'm really, really excited um, to read this. It's like I said, it's not a huge time commitment. It's uh, 341 pages and this is so cute, you guys. I don't even know if I can show. I might have to stand up for this one. Look at the bottom of the pages. You see that? I'm like making animation here, you guys. Well, I'm not the person who drew that is, but. Like how adorable. That's what I'm proposing here. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really excited to start, but I am not going to start until I know what you guys want to do with this. So if you're interested in joining me for this, even if it's just a few of us, then let me know. I'll chat a little bit about it on the podcast. The segment surrounding this will be incredibly brief on the actual podcast, but the comment section, we can talk about it down there. We can talk about it on the Ravelry group. Um, it'll just be really brief on the podcast, so it doesn't take up a ton of time if there's lots of people that aren't going to join in. Um, so just keep that in mind. But I really, really would like to, to do that. So if you can find it at your local library, great. Um, get a used copy on Amazon, something. I just think it's a cool book to have, like in your collection as, you know, a knitter or a crocheter or a fiber artist of some kind. So let me know what you guys think. It is called Three Bags Full by Leonie Swan. And we could do perhaps a little like book club. So let me know. Okay, works in progress. I'm excited to share with you guys what I have on the needles right now. I have works in progress that you have seen and then I have some project forecasting or whip forecasting that I'm gonna be chatting about a little bit as well. Okay, so the first whip that I wanna share with you guys, um, there's no pattern for this. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants with this one. This was uh, supposed to be a Constellate hat and I changed my mind about that and you can watch all about that on the previous episode of the podcast. So I decided instead of ripping out the whole ribbed brim that I did, that I was just gonna keep it and create a hat, like I said, by the seat of my pants. And that's what I'm doing. And this hat was originally going to be for one person. And after working on it and kind of seeing the texture, 
you know, come together and the color of the yarn, I decided it's gonna be for somebody else. So this hat I'm knitting for my little niece, Lou, who just turned four. I'm gonna knit this for her for Christmas um, because it's just so whimsical and, you know, childlike. I, I think the color kind of lends itself to, you know, that whimsy and, and the texture as well. So I'm really excited to give this to my niece for the holidays. I think it's gonna be a really perfect hat for that. Um, but again, there's no pattern. This is kind of, like I said, fly by the seat of my pants. Um, I'm, I'm taking rough notes, but not anything. I'm just kind of having fun sampling different textures with this one. So here we have it. This is my August hat, by the way, for the August portion of the Wool Needles Hands knit along. And there we go. I'm going to try and stretch it a little bit so you can see the texture happening. So when I started working on this, I was assuming that the hat was just going to be this seated rib that's happening right here. I was thinking that I would just have this three by one brim and then seated rib all the way up. And as I started going, I was like, you know, why, why just do that? Why not shake it up a little bit and, you know, sample some different textures, do some baubles. I haven't knit anything with baubles for years. Um, so that's what I decided I was going to do. And I'm actually taking inspiration from that, um, I don't know the name of the pattern. I want to say it's a CC hat, like the letter CC hat. Um, it has like ripples of different texture going up. And I kind of was thinking about that when I was, you know, pulling this um, out of my imagination, I guess. And so that's kind of where I was going with that. But I love it so far. I think it's a lot of fun. And like I said, it's really whimsical. It's got some fun texture. You see the seated rib happening here just some offset bobbles here, more seated rib right here, and then this is like a nice yarn over, you know, kind of lace, what you call it, happening right here. I don't know, I just started um, making decreases in yarn overs and it creates that nice little, you know, wave of little holes in your, or eyelets in your fabric. And then up here, I'm doing more of that seated rib. And then above that, I think I'm gonna do some more baubles again. I'm not exactly sure. I was thinking that I would make this um, section right here, the seated rib, the baubles, the seated rib, and the lace. I would repeat that twice. And then that would be the length of the hat. And then I would top it with a really cute pom-pom. So that is my August hat. I'm super excited about this. Um, and I like these little baubles. I actually looked up how to knit a bobble because it's one of those techniques that I've done before, but I didn't memorize how to do it. It's just, it's kind of like, um, it's not like this anymore, but it used to be like this, the Kitchener stitch. I would always have to look it up. Even though I'd done it like several times, I still had to look it up because you know, you just, you forget these things. Um, bobbles was one of those things. And I actually um, found a little tutorial on how to knit a bobble on Craftsy and I'll link to it here so you can, um, find that if you're interested plus I'll link to it down below in the description box but the bobbles are really cute um they're not what I thought a bobble was when I was remembering back on what I had done before and I think that's because you can actually do bobbles a few different ways this is almost just like you've created this flat piece of fabric and then it gets connected I don't know it's it's kind of hard to explain but they're really cute I like them they do the job so so yeah, this is my August hat for the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along. And I'm knitting this in fiber for the people yarn. The color here um, was a one-off misfit color and it was super pretty. Um, they all sold, they sold out a few updates ago and I won't be having this exact color back in the shop, um, but it's very lovely. I love it. And this is on my Twisty Singles Lux base, which is actually just called Lux now. And it's a 70% superwash merino, 30% silk single ply. It's beautiful. And I'm pairing it here um, with kind of, a, it's, you know, I have not figured out what this is, but it's just a really soft, fuzzy fiber. So I uh, caked them up together and this is how they look together. It's really, really beautiful. So that is the yarn that's going into this hat. And it's very lovely, perfect for a little girl who loves all things girly and mermaids and unicorns and all of that. So that's what this is. Oh, and you know, I get a lot of um, comments on my stitch marker on this. So I just would show you cause it's really cute. It's a little postcard stitch marker and it has this little jewel right here. And on the back, it's kind of like embossed like the back of a postcard, it's gold. 
It's really p pretty. I um I didn't buy this anywhere as a progress keeper. I actually made it with a charm that I picked up at Joanne. Uh, so that's my progress keeper for this, and I I love it. I feel like this out of all the progress keepers I have makes me the happiest because it's like a miniature of something that's typically bigger. I that's what a miniature is, right? I like things like that. Little miniatures they make me happy. So that's my progress keeper. All right, my next work in progress is so close to being finished, you guys. This is my granny stripe baby blanket that I am crocheting for my sister-in-law's newest that is coming in November, my new niece. I'm really excited to have this finished just because I want to see what it looks like when it's all finished and blocked and everything. So I'm really excited to share this with you. And but first, before I do that, I wanted to share what I am holding it in. I needed to move it into something a little bit bigger than what I had it in before this. Um, this isn't like a project bag necessarily. And the reason why this is special is it was gifted to me by Pow, who is the host of the Pow Knits podcast. And I don't know if he's uploaded recently within the last month. I know he took a little bit of a break. He lives in Barcelona um, and he works in Barcelona there and he's an amazing knitter. He creates the most beautiful knitwear. His um, partner is actually a, I want to say he's um, not just a knitwear fashion designer, but he's in fashion design in Barcelona. And so he, Pau does a lot of the knitwear that goes along with that. Um, but anyway, Pau gifted this to me in kind of like a fiber share that he and I did, just the two of us. And I love it. His mother made these. Um, and I just think it's kind of cool that he would gift something to me like that. And it's nice and soft and it's big enough to hold my crocheted baby blanket. And so I'm happy to be able to use it. So Pau, if you're watching, hello and thank you so much for this. I love using it for my blanket. It's just perfect. Okay, so let's see what we have going on so far. You guys, <laughs> I have made it to the border and I have decided that I'm just going to do um, a simple ruffle border for this blanket. And I'm, I'm happy with that decision after seeing that come together um, and seeing how it's looking. I'm, I'm really happy that I decided to go that route. So I can't hold this whole thing up so you can see it. So I'm going to try my best to hold it up so you can see most of it. Um, so here is kind of an example of the ruffle that I'm adding to this so far. So my whole blanket is here. Oh, and you know, I guess I should go, let's go this way because then you can see the most recent colors that I added. So last time we spoke, I believe, I, you know what, I, goodness sakes, I don't actually even know where we were last time. I want to say donuts with dad. Maybe I had gotten a little bit into this pretty gray happening right here. Um, then I added clay and then this is Navajo rug. I'll get in there so you can kind of see them. And then I topped that off with barn owl. And then I just did a little tiny bit of seagrass up here to get me back to the beginning of the row so I could start my my border. So that is what I added. I had talked about adding more colors than that, but I got to a certain size and I felt like it was suitable. It was perfectly fine. And I really wanted to get this border going um, because I have some other projects that I want to work on and I just wanted to get this done. So I went ahead and looked up the ruffle border for this and I got started. And the the website that I use, the tutorial that I use for making a ruffle border is from Attic24. So I'm gonna link to that down below. It's the same place where I got um, the inspiration for the granny stripe. It, she has a granny stripe blanket pattern um, and I just kind of used that pattern loosely to create my granny stripes here. But um, that's also where I found the tutorial for how to do the crochet um, ruffle edging. So I'll link to that down below. But this is what I have so far. I want to find where I left off. So I decided, I had talked before about what color I wanted to use for the border, but I didn't really go into any great detail about it. But I decided on this gray. It's kind of a really soft silver gray. And this is a 70% mohair, 30% acrylic mix happening here and I really love the yarn. I'm going to go ahead and show you. I have a whole ball of it here that I'll show you. It's by Cascade Yarns. It's called Bolasine, the finest from Italy created exclusively for Cascade Yarns. So this is what it looks like. It's got a really lovely halo. It's super hairy. Um, really, really hairy mohair here. 
The acrylic is nice because um, this is a baby blanket. I do want it to be relatively washable. Um, the yarn is primarily... I'm almost 100% sure it's all superwash. I don't think that there's any non-superwash in the blanket. It's all fiber for the people yarn, but I do have a couple non-superwash bases, and I don't think either of those got put into this. Um, but I spoke to my sister-in-law about it and about hand washing it and everything, and, and uh, yes, she does know that I'm working on this, so it's not really a surprise. But anyway... It's still nice to know it's got a little bit of acrylic in it because it will give it some durability because it is probably going to be washed a few times. But I love the color with the blanket. Now, it's very muted. It's not super thrilling or anything like that. I could have gone the route of doing something really bright and punchy, but the star player of this blanket is all of these, you know, all of these random colors happening here from the really pretty scrappy, you know, pattern that's going on and so I wanted this to be a really nice accent but not something that was going to overpower or draw the eye away from the blanket itself and and also too because this was in my stash so I figured hey what a cool idea to add a nice subtle gray um, but also to make it something that was kind of fuzzy and and it had its own little texture as well so it's a really cool contrast in the texture of the yarn so let me find a piece that has some color and you can kind of see Okay, so you can kind of see it's a really pretty contrast to all of the color happening in the blanket. It's nice and it creates a really nice thick fabric. It's a fingering weight yarn. I'm almost positive. Yeah, it's well, you could probably consider once you're knitting with it and because of the pretty heavy halo that it has, maybe it's a little bit more of like a sport weight, but it is a nice fine weight, but it does give it a really nice squishy edge to the blanket. It's a nice, you know, it's not just a real thin flouncy ruffle. It's a nice thick squishy ruffle that's soft to the touch. It's not itchy at all. Um, it's, it's really very nice. And so I'm super excited about this. Next time you guys see me, this will be done. It will be blocked and have a really, really cute ruffle border. I, you guys, I just love it so much. It's gonna ruffle even more than it is right now because like I said, I'm not completely finished with it yet, but I really think it's very pretty. So super, super happy with this. Can't wait to have it all finished. I am not going to be able to go to the baby shower. It's in um, Texas and it's very shortly after I'll be returning from Vogue Knitting Live, but my sister-in-law is actually going to Vogue Knitting Live with me. So that's gonna kind of be our little, um, it's just gonna be us. We're not gonna have any children with us. It's just the two of us. So it'll be a nice kind of um, celebration, I guess you could say, but I will be sending this nice and wrapped up to her for her baby shower. So I'm excited about that with the crocheted granny square garland that we're gonna be working on for the garland along but I love it. I'm kind of sad to see it off the hook, but I'm, I'm happy that it's going to be finished just because like I said, I do want to work on some other things, but it's been, a, it's been so much fun to work on this. Such a nice like make, such a really soothing, relaxing project. I do have another granny stripe blanket in the works. It's, it's, kind of the length of our bed so it would end up being a kind of like a throw for the end of our bed but that's just an ongoing project that I work on as I work on it so at least I don't have to say goodbye to granny stripes altogether. All right, you guys, the curtains are closed. It's officially dark outside. And if you could notice, um, you could see the reflection of all the lights and everything that's in front of me in the window. And I feel like that can be kind of distracting. So I just went ahead and closed the curtain. Um, this is an evening podcast. I'm actually podcasting in the evening and, and it is 7.30. That means my littlest is going to bed right now. So I am actually gonna hop up and go kiss my littles goodnight and I will be right back. And we're back. My little ones are in bed and I had to go give them a little kisses goodnight. So I'm back. So let's go ahead and move on to my whip forecasting. Okay, so the first whip that I'm pulling out for whip forecasting is called the Stash Buster Sweater. And this is by Rosie Woodland. Um, I found this in a Knit Simple magazine, um, the pattern for this. And I loved the shape of it. I just loved the ease of the sweater, the um, kind of just like the not only the ease of the actual sweater fit itself, but just how cozy and comfy it looks. Now, when you see it on the pattern page, it shows it in a really beautiful stripe. I decided that I wanted to knit mine just in a solid gray. I'm actually using Patton's Classic Wool Worsted for this because it's one of my favorite worsted weight um, wool yarns. It's, uh, it's a Highland wool. It's a real nice rustic 
um, wool, very similar to Lion Brand Fisherman's wool. It's really nice, very rugged. And so this is what I have um, of this sweater so far. So this is the back of the sweater. Nothing really exciting to report or to see, I guess, but I, I love this so much. And I do love having this in kind of the works because it's right now, I mean, it's all stocking it. The whole sweater um, is a stockinette sweater. So it's a really nice kind of a project to work on for some mindless knitting. Um, because you're knitting it in pieces, it's not being knit in the round. It's knit and purl um, to create that stockinette fabric. And I don't mind purls so much when you're purling a lot in a row. Um, it's when you're going back and forth between knitting and purling that it just starts to to drive me nuts but I don't mind this and actually it's a kind of a really nice place to like hone those purling skills and to get your hands used to that movement again if you haven't been purling for a while um which I don't know if somebody can say that they haven't purled in a while since it's kind of an integral part of knitting in general but I'm really loving this right now I'm actually um moving it over to another set of needles it's actually currently on a pair of Licka needles and you guys, I know everybody says like amazing things. I'm just checking to make sure these needles are the same. Yeah. Um, everybody says amazing things about Licka needles and the wood of the Licka needle is really lovely. It really is nice, but the cable is not flexible at all. It's very um, stiff and nothing I've done to kind of loosen it. And I've put it in boiling water. I've set it you know, I've, I've steamed it with my iron with like a, you know, a rag over the top of it. I've done so many things to try to get it to loosen and it doesn't loosen. Like it's just, it doesn't, you know, ease up at all. And so I'm putting it on a set of Addies right now because not only are Addies super fun to knit when you're doing, you know, stockinette, it's nice to knit stockinette with Addies because they move so fast. Um, but also because the Addie cord is so flexible and amazing. So I'm switching this over right now. Uh, to those Addies. And you know, in my Ask Me Anything thread on uh, Ravelry, somebody asked me to show how I knit. Um, I've actually been asked that by a few people uh, to for people to see how I actually uh, knit. So I guess this is a good opportunity to share that with you. I used to be one who threw my yarn. And what I mean by that, if and it's weird because like the muscle memory, you go from doing one thing for so long to doing something else that it's hard to go back to that other thing. So when you throw the yarn, you kind of hold it in such a way that you're going to wrap it over the needle. So I'm just watching the screen, so I'm not, this isn't confusing. Um, so you would add your needle and then wrap the yarn like this. But the way that I do this is I flick the yarn. So I just take it, it's hard when I'm holding it. it. It's actually kind of a mix between throwing and flicking. It's just a really fast movement of my finger. And it has kind of changed my knitting drastically. It makes things so much faster. Um, especially, I think that's why I love using really slippery needles is because when you're doing this motion with your hands, this like flicking motion, a slippery needle makes it so much more satisfying because you're already kind of knitting in such a way that, you know, you're trying to get speed, I guess. And not because I'm trying to be like a knitting speed demon or anything. It just makes it more, I don't know, it just makes things fly through, you fly through things faster and it's fun to see the progress. So that's kind of why I started knitting this way. And so having needles that kind of, you know, complement that is nice. So I'm just getting this onto my Addy so I can hold it up on one needle and then I can talk a little bit more about it. So hopefully you don't mind seeing me sitting here just knitting away at this. See, this is the kind of like knitting that's great to have if you are just, you know, when we drive places as a family, I don't drive, my husband drives. Um, and so it's nice to have a project like this that I can just take with me, pull out. I don't have to look at it, you know, if it's dark, you know, outside I can still work on this in the car without having to look at it. Um, I look every once in a while, like right now, just because I'm, I think I'm nervous about knitting in, in front of you guys. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's just, it's really kind of nice. It's soothing to have a project like this. And then this is worsted weight yarn, a size six needle. My sweet spot when it comes to needle and yarn is worsted weight on a size seven, but you know, a size six is not, you know, far off. So it works out lovely to, uh, to knit with it makes it feel like it's just effortless 
that's kind of like I brought that up in an episode a while back like what's your sweet spot is it you know when it comes to like your yarn weight and your needle size and it was so interesting getting all of your guys' responses um, on that and I, I think that you know I don't think that's something that we um, think about actively very often Whoops. Um, but if you do think about it you'll realize that you do actually have um, a sweet spot it's that one combination that just seems to be effortless all right we're almost to the end here and then we can move forward The one thing about these Licka needles that I really do like, or I mean, another thing about these needles that I do, do like, is the sound that they make when they tap, um, tap each other. It's not like a typical wood needle sound. It has a little bit more of a flat tone to it. It's more like a click than uh, that scratchy tap of, of wooden needles. It's nice. Okay. Oi! I didn't realize. We gotta get this. I'll just transfer these and look at this. See what I have? I got two needles going on right here. This is all just a matter of transferring the stitches over because you really want to see all of this on the podcast. Just a bunch of mindless shots of me messing with my stitches. Okay. These guys over here, and then I can say sayonara to these licking needles. I'm telling you guys, I really want to like them. What is that? Um, I really want to like these needles. I really do. But I just, I can't get beyond the cable. It's really not a good thing. Okay, so that is what I have. I did all that thinking that I would be able to hold this up so you could see it. So that's what I have so far of the Stash Buster sweater by Rosie Woodland. And I love it. I really do. Um, so that's just the back. I will be separating or... Um, shaping for the sleeves next pretty quickly actually I think this is almost to that point so I'm excited to start work on this again um, I really love this knit I love the feel of that rustic worsted worsted weight yarn I love the pattern and I love the project bag this is my fringe supply company tartan uh, project bag that I got last year. So this project, I actually cast it on this project in December of 2017, so um, just a little under a year ago. And I think I picked this up in, I wanna say January. I got this after Christmas, actually. Love it, love this a lot. It's kind of like a waxed canvas. You guys have seen all of seen these. They're pretty popular. So that is gonna be holding my Stash Buster sweater. And I'm excited to get work going on that. The next thing that I'm going to be pulling out and getting started on is my Marlebon cardigan. So I cast it on to the Marlebon cardigan, and I actually can't remember exactly when I cast it onto it. I'm going to check my Ravelry right now. I cast it onto this December. So this I cast it onto very um, shortly after casting onto the Stash Buster sweater. I, the reason I chose this is because I wanted the finished object in my wardrobe, a nice kind of classic cabled cardigan, and this is just that fits the bill. And so this is the Marlebon cardigan. I'll go ahead and pop up a picture right here so you can see what that looks like in all of its glory. And then I can show you what I have. I have to be really careful because this comes flying off the needles really easily. Um, this is knit in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter which is a, it's not really a single ply because I don't even think it's, well, no, I mean, it's spun. It's just very loosely spun. It's not plied, I mean, it is a single ply, um, but it's a very loose spun fiber. Like you could tear it really, really easily and, and it has happened to me and you can actually see evidence of that um, along the edge of the cardigan right here where I've, I broke the yarn and I had to add new yarn just because it just happens. And actually when you order the shelter yarn from Brooklyn Tweed, it comes with a little information guide on how to kind of use the yarn, what to do if that happens, how to prevent that from happening, so on and so forth. And I really appreciated that. Um, so that is something that comes with that, kind of helps to keep you prepared for what to expect with the yarn. But it's really lovely yarn and the colorway is beautiful. I believe this is Quarry. No, no, no. I take that back. Moonstone. I think Quarry is another yarn by Brooklyn Tweed. Um, I think, yeah, this is Moonstone. And it is um, 200 yards. And 
It's American Targi Columbia wool and it's beautiful. Brooklyn Tweed wool is absolutely lovely. Um, so I'm really, really excited about this. Now I didn't get much work done on this before I set it down. Um, but what I did get done just inspires me to keep working on it. Um, so this is the antler cable motif that runs up the back. So this is a pattern by Bristol Ivy. And Bristol Ivy, I think um, she has a lot of patterns that employ um, antler cables um, or cables similar to this one. I love them so much. They're so dramatic and uh, just really interesting to look at. So this is the whole back panel of the cardigan. So you have these cables that run all the way up the back and they're beautiful. And then they are blocked out by sections of reverse stockinette, which is really beautiful. And then running up the side panel or the button panel are some other really pretty intertwined cables happening here um, with a really nice chunky ribbing. It's really lovely. I love it so much. Um, I love the way it feels. I love the hardy nature of the wool. I don't have anything like this in my wardrobe and I, I like knowing that I will have a cardigan that's really rustic um, and heavy and warm because it gets cold here, um, but it's not always so cold that you need a really heavy winter coat. Something like this, a really nice heavy cardigan is suitable for some of our colder winter days. And so it's kind of nice to have something like this you can throw on and it's enough to get you outside and be warm. And so I'm super excited to get this going. I, um, I feel like when I was working on this before, one of the things that I thought about it was that despite all of the cabling that was going on, it was pretty fast. I felt like I made progress on it really quickly despite all the heavy, heavy cabling. So super excited about that. So that's my Marlebon cardigan. This is going to be coming out and being brought back into circulation. I'm so excited. Just the little stitch marker that I have on there. I can't remember where I got this progress keeper. I'm a progress keeper, I should say, not stitch marker, but I can't remember. Somebody gave this to me and I love it. It's an anchor and it just looks really good on the cardigan with the cables. I love little details like that. Okay, so super, super excited about this. Here's the yarn, a little closer look at shelter, all caked up. It makes the biggest cakes. It's really nice and lofty and beautiful. This is living in oh, one of my favorite project bags. Um, I have to be really careful because these stitches are gonna come right off. Okay, so this is living in my Joy in the Stitches uh, project bag. This is by Trisha Wattenberger. She is the designer, the maker behind Joy in the Stitches, and she makes these incredible quilted project bags, you guys. They come with a nice little pocket on the back for your notions. I have stitch, uh, pr stitch markers in here because this pattern, you know, you need lots of little stitch markers. You're bound to lose one. One's gonna fall off and end up in the couch. So you need to have some extras to rely on. So those are in there. Um, cable, cable needles are in there. Um, great project bag, really excellent project bag. It holds this pretty well right now, um, but I know that I'm gonna need something bigger than that. But you know, who needs more project bags, really, honestly? But that is what this is living in right now, and I love it. So Joy in the Stitches, project bag, Marlebon cardigan by Bristol Ivy for Brooklyn Tweed, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. It's all good things, you guys. It's all good things. All right, guys, that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me again for another episode of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. It's always so nice to be able to sit here and chat with you guys about all of these things that would otherwise bore my husband to tears. It's nice to have this as an opportunity uh, and a place to share these things with you guys. So thank you for being that for me. Definitely let me know what you guys think about three bags full if you are interested in doing a little you know podcast book club thing we i don't know how this is going to work we're gonna kind of figure it out as we go but let me know if you're interested i think it would be a lot of fun to have something like this going on at the podcast uh just i mean hello sheep detectives please so anyways Thank you guys so much for being here with me as I chat about all of these things with you. I can't wait to talk to you guys again on episode 32 of the podcast. I did not upload last week. It was kind of a, an empty week for uploads. There were some things going on in the family and I felt like it was important to prioritize family um, 100% and so I didn't do any uploading last week. But you're also going to be getting another upload either at the end of this week, beginning of next week, which is going to be the Wool Needles Hands vlog series for Color Fest Sock Set Club round two. So I'm gonna go ahead and link to the first vlog series up here. This is a series of vlogs where 
I kind of chronicle my creative process for coming up with the club colorway for the Color Fest Sock Set Club by Fiber for the People. So next week, either Sunday or the beginning of next week, I will have round two up on the podcast channel. So look for that. I'm really excited to share that with you guys. Also, don't forget, I'm always doing a local yarn store call to action here on the podcast. It's where I ask you, the viewer, to go out into the wild and get footage of your local yarn store. Send it to me here at the podcast at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. I'll patch it together in a really cool show and tell of this particular knitting shop or fiber shop or what have you and share it at the end of the podcast. And also, this doesn't just have to be a yarn shop. If this is your local fabric store, if this is your local cross stitch store, I mean, what, what is whatever it is that helps you and inspires you in your local area, take some video of it. Let's spread the word about these places and it kind of helps to continue to broaden our perspective of this community that we're a part of. So definitely don't forget to do that. I need some new shops to share here on the podcast, so please don't hesitate to share those with me. Until episode 32, you guys, happy knitting, happy whatever it is that you're doing, and I will see you then. Bye! <laughs>